Well, welcome back to Rest Here and Forge. We're going to be doing some Damascus today. We're going to be using 1084 and 15 and 20. Now these are 48 inch sticks, two inches wide and three sixteenths of an inch thick. We're going to be cutting them into equal parts, but we're only going to be using 11 pieces. So you're going to have 12 pieces of each. We're going to be using 11 pieces of 15 and 20 and 12 pieces of 1084. We're going to be starting out with a 23 layer billet. It will be a dry weld. Now, if you're not familiar with what making Damascus, you have a wet weld, you have dry welds, you have uh, a dirty weld. We're going to be using a dry weld technique where we don't use any flux. We're going to be taking thin pieces of sheet metal and welding them around the outside to cover up the layers that you can, you can see. So you're going to use the top and bottom piece of the billet to be the top and bottom piece of the box. And that creates a non-atmospheric environment within that uh, billet so that you don't need to use any flux at all to keep the oxygen away. What we do need to do is get these things cut and cleaned of all oils and all mill scale that's on this uh, before we remotely do anything. And so that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be cutting, cleaning, stacking, and setting the, the billet today and then take off the mild steel jacket that we're going to be putting on it. So let's get to work. Okay, so here we are at the vise. We're going to put our first piece in here. This is a 1084 high carbon steel. 48 inches long. We're going to cut this in a, a four inch segments. And we're going to do the same thing with the 15 and 20, but time constraints to keep this not so long and not so repetitive. And when it's just cutting and uh, scribing, we only are going to show the, the 1084 being uh, marked up and cut. But we're going to go over to the bandsaw here, speed it up quite a bit, and Cut this at super speed. Now this is a fingernail polish remover, and we use this to um, keep our pieces from oxidizing after we clean them, and also to clean any oil off of the pieces. We're using at the uh, Grizzly 2x72 with a coarse Scotch Brite belt. You'll see that belt here shortly. There it is, right there. And uh, we're just gonna buff these up. We're not really taking up much off. We're just cleaning that mill scale off, cleaning any rust off, and there is our two baths of fingernail polish remover. And we're going to start with 1084 and we're just going to alternating pieces and stack this up until we have 23 layers of 1084 and 15 and 20. Now, you don't have to alternate the layers back and forth, you know, starting with 1084 and then going to 15 and 20. It, because they are all, you know, have some car high carbon in them. And, but it's a good practice to get into if you ever use pure nickel. You know, you don't want that pure nickel on your cutting edge. So just get in the habit of starting with your high carbon base and then going to your nickel content uh, media for, and then alternating that back and forth, knowing that the, the nickel portion of your billet is going to be less layers than the high carbon portion. Now we got these all straightened up, one flat side. We have a few long pieces in there, but that's okay. We we'll just uh, trim those up on the end. Now we're putting our sheet metal jacket on these, create a, a box. And I mean, you don't have to get these welds like super good. You just need to be able to cut off the oxygen. Now it is important also to um, leave like a pinhole in these, but I'm not a welder, so I'm, I guarantee there are pinholes. This is not airtight. This is not completely airtight, completely watertight. Uh, well, by no means. So, uh, but it is important to keep a vent. If you're a really good welder, make sure you either drill a vent in it or um, leave a space uh, in your weld so that any gases um, that need to escape will escape. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a bomb. So, um, and nobody wants that to happen. But yeah, so we just uh, weld up these uh, sides and seams, and you know we don't need to worry about the outside uh, too much. And since we've been uh, keeping this bill under compression the whole time, uh, nothing should be getting in between our layers either. So uh, in the event there there is something in between the layers, you'll know right away as soon as you uh, pull it apart, and you'll you'll see where it either delammed or it just didn't weld up. So. You 
see a little pinhole there that I missed uh, a gap in the weld. That's okay, like I said before. So um, we're going to weld up this last two seams here. And you'll see me measure it here in a minute. I actually forgot what side I was uh, on. So I had, to, I had to make sure that I was putting my stem, my stick on the right side. Uh, I didn't want to put it on the, the layered side to be all backwards. So uh, you'll see me measure it here in a minute to make sure I was in the right spot. So um, I did end up cleaning the surfaces here just because I wanted a good weld, a stick weld on that, uh, that sheet metal. like the forge here. A little bit of slow-mo theatrics. So this is our first heat and we're just squishing this down. This isn't this is hotter than what it looks um, but with a press you don't need it super super hot. We're getting this well set. We're getting all those really compressed those layers really compressed together now. We started getting a little bit off center here. This is what we're doing. We're chamfering it back to center and then we're gonna take out the high spot here right in the same heat. We're gonna take off this uh, jacket now. Now I should have left the stem on till last. It would give me something to hold on to. It's kind of an idiotic move here. I should have looked on the other side first. That way I wouldn't have been, had to, you know, work fast while I was grabbing onto a slightly warm billet from just the abrasiveness of the cutoff wheel. So. Those layers look really good in there. We could have got it a little bit more uh, compressed, but they're all stuck together pretty good. And, and uh, the, as of right now, we're looking at a really good uh, weld. Now, you'll see me put some uh, cross welds across the layers. And you know, right here, I do a, a single pass. I should have done a corner to corner X, but I didn't. And you'll see here shortly where I didn't do this weld on the stick side, which uh, underneath this much power of press, you'll see here shortly what I'm talking about, where it decides to uh, pull apart. So, this next heat, where you'll see it, right, you see it right here, right there. Apart, there it is again, slow mo. Boom. Now, what I should have done immediately was pull it out, flux it, and put it back in the porch. I didn't. I continued pressing, and we in this next heat right here, we did end up getting it fluxed, and we got it stuck. It worked out great, so it uh, turned out good. So stay tuned for part two. Thanks for viewing.